All right, so we've added the catalyst to the resin. Now we're gonna stir the resin. Uh, you wanna make sure that you get it off all the edges, off of the stick and off of the bottom. You wanna make sure everything gets mixed really well. So I recommend anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, depending on how warm it is. You wanna keep the heat in the room so that everything is around 70 to 72 degrees. Uh, it just makes everything pour and flow out a lot more smooth. But again, you want to stir this really well. Um, it's going to be very thick and pasty. But the more you stir it, you'll definitely feel the difference. It won't be quite as clumpy and pasty as this. Once the activator has had time to seep into the uh, into the piece, I like to use my stopwatch on my uh, on my Apple Watch. Uh, just gives me a little bit of bearing so I know how long I've been at it um, Because once you pour the activator into the material you're on the clock. So You have about an hour You have about an hour to an hour and a half to get everything mixed and applied. So Basically, I'm just going to stir away at this for another five or ten minutes or so All right now that we've got all of the material mixed we're ready to prep our tools for applying the Echo Pell 2K. Uh, step one here, we're just gonna tape up our, our uh, troweling comb. We're gonna put a piece of two inch tape around it. We wanna leave about one eighth of an inch of the teeth exposed. And what will happen at the end of the process, we're gonna use this tool to rake through the bottom of the finish to make sure we don't have any excess material and we don't have any puddling on the bottom that's what this is really good for i like to leave a little tab up on the top just to make it easier i reuse the tools but basically at this point you're going to need the taped up uh, comb the yellow trowel and just a solo cup you're going to take the gallon of material and we're going to get started here uh, step one once we put everything inside of the tub, obviously be wearing your gloves. We're just going to fill up the solo cup. Uh, you can fill it up as full as you'd like. Um, you know, as we're pouring the material, we really want to lay it on really thick right up into the corners. So it's best to start in the back wall to have a little bit less material to scoop from the front to pull towards the back later in the process. But we just want to pour the whole cup out right into the corner. If you get any on the wall or anything like that, don't worry about that. That's just going it, to, it'll all wash right off with, um, you know, you can just wipe it with a paper towel after you've pulled the tape. But don't worry about it for now. We just want to pour everything right up to the edge. And we want to do all of the edges first. It's easiest if you can use the cup to actually pour the material onto the top edge versus scooping it from the bottom with a, a with the yellow spreader. We want to use this beginning time and just actually lay everything down as quickly as we can. Uh, this is a timed material. You do have about an hour of work time. I like to use my Apple Watch and set the, uh, set the timer for it. But Echo Pell 2K is definitely the strongest material, and you'll see, as opposed to some of the knockoff competitors, this material flows a lot more slowly. It's much more thick. Um, it's, it's actually a little bit easier to work with, but at the same time, uh, you do need to stick within the time parameters. Uh, this will definitely make a difference at the end of the process. So we're just scooping some of the material here and getting the spots that we couldn't reach underneath the drain. The spigot's just a little bit too low. But we wanna get the material everywhere on the top first so it has time to run down and level out. And don't worry about how fast this is going when it comes to the actual rundown. You wanna get the three walls coated, like I said, nice and quickly. And then we're gonna run one line with the yellow with the yellow trowel spreader we're just going to do one pass across each of the three back walls so you just slide it right across and again you're not trying to paint the piece 
You're just trying to level out the material and make sure it's not pulled up too much. You don't want to have drips later in the process. So we're just going to do one nice pass. And as you can see, there's a ton of extra material starting to come towards the front edge there. Just with this one simple tactic, you're going to save yourself about 15 minutes of rundown. Uh, something that they don't normally say right in the instruction piece, but that's just a tidbit that we've learned from some of our experiences. So here we are filling up another cup, and we're going to start pouring the front edge here. We try to stay away from doing the entire front edge until we have everything spread out on the inside because you do have to lean over that edge. And the time that it takes to, you know, lean over, if you're doing multiple units in a day, it's really going to put a strain on your back. So just be mindful of that. But we've used the entire cup of uh, the entire kit of the... Our resin now so we're just going to set that gallon aside and we're going to pour the last of this just to coat those last couple of areas here and make everything nice and even uh, obviously having three of the walls be wet it's kind of tough to see the front edge but we're just going to keep pouring and pouring and try to get everything to level itself all out and again the faster you can get it on there the faster it will level down towards the bottom. So now we're gonna take the yellow trowel spreader and start scooping some of the material from the drain area. We're gonna start bringing that towards the back of the unit. And from there, uh, once, as you can see the, the run lines down the, down the back wall there, you can start scooping some of that material back up and, and dripping it back down off of the trowel spreader into spots where you notice any missing any missing material or anything like that, uh, it's best It's best to scoop it up and drip it back down. If you have to, you can take the spreader and slide it up the wall with that, but it makes the material a little bit more thick and it makes it a little bit harder to get back down to the bottom and takes it's a little bit more time consuming that way. So my personal preference, I don't like to spread it up any more than Know, half of the half of the wall or so as you can see here that's what we're doing just scooping up just little spots and just moving the material around we're not painting the tub with it we're just moving the material around and leveling everything out we just want everything to be nice and nice and evenly coated and the uh, the echo pell 2k actually does have a ton of self leveling inside of it when you're messing with this in the first hour or so, you'll notice the variant. Uh, if you just leave it for a couple of minutes, any little mark you put in there will all just go right away. So now that we've got most of the bottom spread out, what we're doing here, we're using the spreader to scoop up the excess material off the bottom of the unit and put it back in the cup. So we're going to be doing that so that we can pour the material on the front rail to coat the uh, the inside edge where my left arm is there and then we're going to do the outside as well on that uh, with the same with the same cup full usually it takes about two cups worth of material to coat both the inside wall and the outside wall but what we want to do is pour a heavy coat right there on the edge uh, you can you can lean it halfway towards the inside of the tub or halfway towards the outside of the tub and then we're gonna go back to it. We're gonna use the spreader like we did earlier and we're just gonna level it out. A couple quick passes just to level it out. We're not pressing very hard. See how thick that is? Really just wanna level it out and move material the best that you can towards the inside and towards the outside of the unit. When you don't have any really big puddles left that's when you know that it's good enough. Um, if you push a little bit too hard, you'll be able to see through the material, and then you've no, you, then you'll know you went a little bit too far with it. So you want to just put a little bit, either move a little more material from one side, or take a small scoop off of the bottom, and just move it there. At any time in the process, you notice your gloves are getting. Uh, material on them. If you accidentally put your hand in the material or dropped the spatula into the material, 
just a simple paper towel, uh, just a dry paper towel is the easiest way to wash off the spatula and or your gloves. I personally replace my gloves normally three or four times over the course of doing a unit. You could use the same pair all the way through like I did in this video, uh, but when you keep the spatula nice and clean, it just makes things a lot easier. Um, you know, if your gloves and your spatula are clean, uh, same as the cup, sometimes you get a little bit of residue on the outside. And when you go to lean against the wall or you lean against the sink, you can put handprints all over the place. So you want to be kind of careful about that. They do wipe right off, and if, uh, if you can't get them off just with a, a dry paper towel, if you use either a Clorox wipe or just uh, just a little bit of soap and water, we'll wipe it off of anything before the material cures. Uh, you can just wash it right down with that. But we're going to go for a second pass here at scooping everything out. And we want to make sure that we have the optimum amount of material everywhere on the unit. So we're going to scoop out all the excess material. Uh, over the course of time that it takes to pour out all the material on the walls, it's still running down. And even though it appears like it's pretty level, it's going to keep dripping and dripping and dripping. So you'll notice as I'm working the outside of this unit, you'll notice that the, um, you know, the back corners are still going to be pulling up. We're going to get more and more material going towards the inside of the unit. And that's perfectly fine. That's what we're looking for. That's where the comb will come in later on in the process. So we got another cup here. We're just going to pour it on the outside. And again, the more you pour versus actually using the yellow spreader, the easier you're going to find uh, the easier you're going to find that the process winds up in the end. Um, if you keep using the spreader to lift material from the bottom and then drag the spreader up and across the unit, it's going to leave lines and it's going to be deceptive to your mind where you're going to think that it's going to appear that the tub is not perfect, but with the levelant that's in there, it's going to level itself out. It's going to run down as long as you do it in a timely manner. You really just have to trust the resin and let it work, which is why I'm not spreading any of the outside right now. I'm letting it get as low as it can before I touch it. So the tricky parts, uh, this is one of them, where you want to stick the spreader in the corner and just level out all the bottom with all the pooling on the edges here. So I'm just lightly dragging the spreader across the pieces on the bottom. Don't worry if it's a little thicker in one spot or the other. It's going to level itself out and we're also going to level everything out with the comb a little later in the process. But for now, we're just taking the pooling excess from the corners and we're just spreading it towards the center of the tub. We're just moving material and leveling it out. That's it. Anything around the drain, that's where the pitch of the tub is going to be pushing everything so far down anyways. If you if you scrape an area there bare, by the end of the process, you'll never notice that. It, it, it will all flow back in and cover itself there. It's best to try to get a little bit more material towards the center versus the outsides. Because like I said, it's going to keep running down and... If you don't have enough material in the middle, you'll be left with a couple of little waves on the edges where it, you know, where it continued to run down at the end. So what I like to do is level everything out like I am here and, uh, and move a bunch of material towards the center of the tub. Then after we comb through everything, uh, give it a quick uh, pass with the blow dryer just to pop any extra little bubbles or anything like that. That's where I like to uh, start pulling any drips towards the middle. So you'll see as we keep moving around, we're just moving the material around and making sure that everything's covered so there's no spots that the material can't flow into. And as you can see, it looks like a disaster on the bottom right now, but once the levelant goes through it, that's going to make a whole change and it'll be noticeably different. Alright, so now we're going to go back over here to the outside of the unit, start spreading out these spots. So you have three pieces of paper put down on the floor. This is going to make it so after you do this step of the process, 
and scoop all the material and smooth out the front. You can eliminate one of those pieces of paper. That's going to uh, help you significantly in the keeping everything clean department. So what we're doing right here, we're just scooping material from the bottom and the corner got missed, uh, just the way that the material ran down. So we're just going to spread it right into just the corner and, um, and you don't want to try to pull that drip down, just let it run down on its own. We're still very early in the process and um, and the material is going to have plenty of room to plenty of room to continue flowing out. So here we're just scooping up more and more of the Echo Po uh, leftovers. We're going to put them back in the cup. Normally on a standard tub like this, we really only need most of the material. We usually leave about half a cup full um, to a cup full, depending on the size of the tub. Um, but on this one, like I said, I scooped it up, and it's best just to pour a little bit more on there. It makes things flow so much nicer and leaves the minimal amount of uh, defects in the end. Sometimes to get it straight in there like that, you can hold the spatula straight against the wall and pour the material directly onto the spatula. That's also an option. Um, but scooping it up, you know, sometimes is all you can do. It really depends on the shape of the tub. This one is actually kind of a lucky one. It's just a nice straight wall. The outside is definitely the most tricky, but you can definitely get it taken care of. You just have to, you know, be patient and, um, you know, it's a, it's a prompt patience, which is a little difficult to achieve, but you can definitely get there. Um, so we're just moving material, moving material. This is about the last piece here. I'll scoop up this last little bit. Scoop up these last couple spots here. And uh, notice all the runs and the drips all across the whole unit. When we pan back into this at the end, we're not going to touch this again. This is going to be complete as soon as, as soon as it's got a nice even coat of material on it. You'll be amazed exactly how this winds up. Everything is going to cascade all the way to the bottom. Uh, all of the Echo Pell is going to level itself right out. So here we go with this with this step. Like I said, we're going to eliminate that top layer of paper so we don't step in it and track Echo Pell across the bathroom floor. Uh, not exactly the best way to spend your day washing the floor. So... I like to just drag the trowel right across it and pull any excess material towards the center of the slice of paper. And then we're going to reach over after this and we're going to pull, um, you know, we're going to peel that layer. Um, you know, you can trap any excess trash, um, you know, old gloves, you can put paper towels, anything like that. You can put it right on that piece of paper and we're just going to get that one slice. Make sure everything underneath is still stuck down. And when you're peeling the paper, you want to pull it away from the tub. So we don't want to, we don't want to hit the tub with the, uh, with the paper slice. And if we do, we just want to make sure we put a little bit more material on that spot. And uh, the only other thing with the paper, sometimes it can be saturated with material. You want to fold it up relatively quickly and, uh, and fold it into itself. This way you're not... Uh, this way, you're not touching it yourself, getting it all over yourself, or if you move too slowly, it can drip off of the paper onto the floor, and you don't want that to happen either. All right, so now to dry out all the bubbles and stuff and push the material down a little bit, we're going to give it a quick uh, treatment with the blow dryer. So we're going to put it on high, and we're just going to run right over it real quick, careful not to stir up any excess dust or anything.
down, we're gonna actually use the comb that's been taped to the 1 8 inch. We're gonna run through, um, web load some of the waves that are in there. As the material runs down, it kind of pulls up in certain areas. And, uh, and here we're gonna finish that up. We're gonna basically make it as close to finish as we can. I'm just gonna put another pair of gloves on. So we're gonna rake everything smooth with the comb, scooping up any excess. So when we run the comb through very lightly, we're not trying to force anything anywhere. We're just trying to smooth out the excess. So we'll start at the front. We'll be pulling everything towards the back and then all the leftover, we'll just scoop it back up into the cup. <laughs> this is when the sound stops. So we're just pushing all the material around, dragging the comb lightly through there. We're not trying to push extra hard uh, and weave comb, uh, you know, deep comb lines that go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, if you do get that in an instance, uh, it's easy enough to just, um, you know, hover above it and let the material drip back onto that spot. You're just trying to level everything out so the same amount of material is everywhere. We're going to basically pull everything back towards the back wall. Uh, from the front area and uh, and start raking it all towards the back. It's going to be pulled up a bunch right there like it is in the corner there. I know it's tough to see but then we just start scooping through it with the um, with the comb and we're going to lean on it a little bit, scoop up the excess right back into our cup and then after uh, after everything's the same thickness then we're just going to run the comb through it again and just smooth out uh, all the all the damage that we just caused basically you don't want to go way up the sides you want to stop just on the bottom with the comb anything on the bottom will fill itself back in with the uh, with echo Pell self leveling technology but when you start getting up the wall that's when you start getting to spots where you would have to re-pour in order to do that and if you take too long and uh, and then re-pour you start to have you know little defects in the product so you're better off getting everything done in a timely manner and then just you know follow the guidelines and uh and and be careful with it um but yeah so we didn't have a ton of excess material on this one obviously we um you know we've done plenty of units um so from there we've got everything pretty much taken care of there uh with the raking and combing uh, right now what we're doing like I said, anything around the drain area, it will run right back down towards the drain. Uh, all of the material is going to go to the pitched area, which is towards the drain. So when you tape it up, you want to make sure you do a great job. But from here, you can scoop off all of this excess material right here. And, uh, you know, try not to drip it all over the tub like I just did. Um, this was a difficult one specifically just because the sink was in the way there. So it took a little bit of a balancing act. Um, you know, for commercial application, it's a little bit more tricky because obviously we need to go home and for a DIY residential type of an application, you live at the property. So you can leave that material right on the drain until the end of the process, uh, scoop up just a little bit of it and uh, and then pull the tape off and everything will come off but for us we need to go home so that's where it gets a little bit tricky but once we smooth everything out down towards the drain we're uh, we're pretty much good to go everything's all nice and level now and um, you know we're just gonna take 
you know, take the edges. You can dip your finger uh, in, in the material down where the drain is and just touch any little spot that needs to be touched up. If you get a hair in there or anything like that, as long as you're before the hour, hour and 10 minute mark, you're fine to go. I personally, since I have to leave, I prefer to wipe off the drain area and try to keep it as clean as I possibly can by using paper towels just to, um, you know, to uh, slow down the runoff down around the drain area. So I'll do this now and uh, from there we're pretty much good to go. Alright, now I'm just going to wipe my gloves off so I can use the blow dryer to uh, run through and pop any little air bubbles that are trapped in the Echo Pell 2K. Um, you know, you don't have to go crazy and buy an expensive heat gun. Just a simple blow dryer like we used earlier is perfectly fine. Uh, when you comb through the material, that's the time that you end up getting a lot of air trapped in the, uh, in the finish. And it's best just to slowly go over the bottom anywhere where there's little air pockets with the, uh, with a blow dryer. You don't need to get too close. Just, just air it right over it. You'll see the material. Uh, you'll see the air come right out of it and then don't worry about the um like if it leaves a little crater or something as soon as you shut off the air it'll end up drying and leveling out all right from here we're just going to go around we're going to start pulling that tape off uh, we want to do this earlier in the process this way if uh, any of the material that you put on there um you know, does touch the unit, it'll have time to level itself back out towards the edge. Uh, again, with this, you want to be very careful. You want to just lean over the unit and pull the tape nice and neatly and uh, keep going one hand in front of the other. You don't want to just pull it all from a distance. There can be excess material on the tape that can drip down on you uh, or onto the tub and or you can drop the tape into the tub, leaving a nice line. Uh, you just want to get the three walls and then you want to pull the tape down the side walls. You still want to leave the paper uh, sitting on the on the floor there until uh, until the end of the process. And so here we're just popping the drain cover off, uh, which we taped earlier. So when you do that, and sometimes it's easiest just to keep the spreader tool handy and just punch it right through the middle. Then you can stick your finger through it and pull the tape off. Uh, for the overflow like that, you can wait until the end if you're a DIYer or you're the homeowner doing it on your own home. But as we need to uh, wrap it up at the home, we need to pop it off as a contractor. Uh, so the next step, I'm just gonna, again, pull the material back on the floor and get it all away from the front of the unit there so nothing drips down. And that's what I'm working on here. After I finish that, I'm just going to peel up that one more layer of paper and we'll be ready to go, um, you know, to be finished with the unit for the most part. Again, with the bottom here, it's very important to remember when you're rolling up the material, when you're pulling the tape and the paper off here, whether it rips or anything like that, you want to make sure you fold it up right into itself and, uh, and contain any excess material. If you just leave it hanging, the material could very easily just drip onto the floor and it just leads to more cleanup. And uh, in our experience, less is more with this one. You really just want to clean it up once. You don't want to be wiping it all day long that ends up being a bit of a hassle um, but anything you get on the floor or goes around the tape you can just take a simple paper towel uh, just a dry paper towel will wipe it right off as long as you get to it while the material is still wet and um, you know, it's pretty straightforward all right so now we've given it about an hour or so to cure and everything's run down leveled out it looks great now comes the trickiest part, which is just removing the drain cover, uh, the tape that was on the drain, and the tape from the outside. A, without making a mess, and B, without getting any resin down the drain. So the best way to do that 
is to either use a, a little trowel or a paper towel just to soak up some of the material. You just move it around a little and scoop it up like this. And don't worry about getting a little bit of your finger along the edge. The material is going to run right back to the drain area. You just want to get a good cluster of it out of there. I'm going to do two scoops and then I'm going to pull the drain cover off. So I've got one. Here's the second one. And now you can see the tape nice and clean. This will make it a lot easier to get the drain tape off of there. And go from there. Alright, so you put it on nice and thick, so it's pretty difficult to um, get through the material. I usually keep the tool, but since I've got the gloves on and I don't have a tool, I'm just going to use a little washer. Uh, it's best to use the, the yellow trowel to punch a hole in it, and then you can stick your finger on it. I'm going to use this little washer to do it. I'm just going to reach down. and punch a hole in the material and then stick your finger underneath pull the material off I'm going to go straight to the trash with all this stuff because it's going to be sticky and have extra material so now we're just going to wipe the drain clean and if you're a homeowner and you don't want to put a new drain cover on it's best just to keep wiping it for the next couple of hours or so unless you have a drain cover for this one, you just lean right over and wipe the residue right off. Alright, so now for the floor, basically just want to cut it right up. That will be quickly going to cut this off because you can get a bunch of dripping and the leftover material into the trash. Uh, you can wait. And if you're at a customer's home, this is something you need to do in a timely manner. But you can wait if you're at your own house and take the tape off anytime up to a few hours later. You just want to wipe the edge. And again, this stuff will wipe right off with a paper towel while it's still wet. But once it dries, it's there forever. So you know, we want to clean this area here. Clean everything up good. I'm going to pass on to do it here. Oops. Oops. <laughs> rental property that has maintenance staff that will come back tomorrow and put the hardware back on but normally that's something that you would want to do yourself if you have any other questions or comments please put them below if you can hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel we'd really appreciate that we have a lot of new products coming out this year and we hope that we can help you out in any way possible with that uh, please visit our website at refinishbathsolutions.com for any other needs and uh, tune into our next video.